In a time where the price of a 545 AK is to the roof, where even a basic Bulgarian 74 parts kit costs over a thousand dollars, you still want one. This rifle is no surprise, you've been seeing me shoot it for the past couple of months now. It's a Bulgarian 1980s pattern AKS 74N, S for folding stock, N for the side rail. I can't lie, I mostly picked up this built rifle because I didn't want to take the time with a Russian 74M build. But a fringe benefit of getting an older type rifle is that you can still modernize it, then downgrade it when you have to get a little more historical, like for a Soviet Afghan war reenactment. Like with the AKSU video, the point of this is to inform about the myriad of accessories I'm using for your own consideration, and to articulate how the rifle feels. Although the upgrades to this rifle are inspired by rifles I see in use by Chechen and Russian special forces, this time you'd be a lot more justified in saying that this rifle is westernized, as it represents something a little more near to peer to the Block 2 M4 SOP mod modernizations. Keep in mind, however, that the issued attachments given to Russian special forces are nowhere near as comprehensive as the Block 2 program, and a lot of Russians source their own accessories. Similar to the SOP mod rifles, the weight of the AK is increased substantially, with this 74 coming in at 13 pounds, more than double the weight of the stock 6. I can feel myself growing stronger every time I use this rifle, but that weight also helps damper recoil to the point of non-existence. The weight combined with the effects of the DTK-1 compensator and the towed down gas from the KNS piston make this rifle feel like a gas airsoft gun. The bullets travel flat at long distances and the rifle itself stays flat after every shot. Even after rapid fire with the 4 pound AKT trigger, the gun is extremely controllable. The AKT and the KNS piston in particular are not upgrades you'd see the Russians making, but I find stock AK triggers leave much to be desired with an annoyingly long trigger pull. This rifle was also horribly overgassing, and the installation of the KNS adjustable gas piston fixed that issue too, stopping the bolt carrier from beating the hell out of the rear trunnion. As with the Krinkov's DTK2 compensator, there's a significant concussive blast out of the baffles of the DTK1. Compared to the original 74 flash hider, the recoil is reduced in exchange for greater blast force out of the sides of the rifle, but this force isn't felt by the user. Before I talk about ergonomics, I'd like to thank grayshop.ru, as this video would not have been possible without their support. You can get a 7% discount on all their products, like the brown tactical shirt I'm wearing, with the code BENJ7. Moving on to the increased ergonomics, I've got a rubber Gen 2 RK3 grip replacing the standard pistol grip. I've also got an RK1 mounted as well. We experimented with a B25U mount on a normal rifle with the FSB video, but the actual purpose of the angled 25 mount is for machine gunners to keep their arm clear of the box magazine, and it isn't really as comfortable as a grip on a normal rifle, though it might help with drum mags. Continuing on ergonomics, I've got a PT1 Gen 2 Zenico stock mounted. The new gen stock, however, has different screws for the cheek rest adjustment. It folds and locks into place no problem, however, I've noticed that both Gen 1 and Gen 2 PT1 stocks get this superficial crack right here. I've been monitoring this crack and it isn't an area that affects anything and hasn't gotten any larger since I've noticed it, but still, Zenico, please fix. Mounted on the B13 side rail, the optics in use are the EXPS3 EOTech combined with a G33 x3 magnifier. This popular EOTech combination that's seen both in the East and the West enables comfortable, accurate shooting, and smooth transitions between short and intermediate targets. I've also found that the B13 rail maintains its zero even after detaching and reattaching to the rifle. The B10 Houndguard mounts the RK1 and the KV5P laser switch, as well as the B19N and the ridiculous Kleh2U. The B19N is the reason why I had my gas tube wood removed during the helmet video. It has a Gen 2 Pursed 4 mounted on top. The switch allows you to dial the laser strength and lock it into place if you're worried about burning your night vision. Besides this, it matches the Gen 1 with dual visible IR laser that are slave to each other for zeroing without night vision. It also has a strobe feature for some reason. That big Kle flashlight puts out around 370 lumens. It has a low power setting as well as a strobe feature, though it can't be mounted anywhere besides the 3 o'clock position on the B10 as the head gets in the way of anywhere else unless you have a gooseneck rail or something. 
Before I go any further, I'd like to point out that most of the time I'm shooting in extremely isolated locations far out of cell reception. It is especially important for me to keep a medical kit in case accidents happen, and you should too. When I'm out working on projects, I always keep trauma dressing, chest seals, cat tourniquets, and a splint on me, at minimum. Commando Store conveniently sells all of these items and more. Plus, they have tourniquets on sale right now. Remember, even if you do everything right, you can still get hurt. That's life, and you need to prepare for it. For further upgrades, I'd really like to get a Purse 3 laser with the illuminator and replace the ridiculous clay light with a dual white light IR flood. I don't actually have any IR flood or IR illuminators on the rifle right now, and if I wanted to match with the abilities of a Block 2 M4, that would be a good idea. That and a suppressor, but I'll save that latter point for its own video. What I've shown you is the main configuration for this rifle, but there is an alternative configuration for war games. The reason why I went with a side rail mount instead of a forward mounting B33 top cover was because sometimes I need to mount a grenade launcher. That launcher you saw in the anti-terror terror video is called the TAG-15. It's a CO2 powered launcher that shoots various explosive or smoke projectiles at extremely long distances, direct or indirect. Because of the loss of the B-10, I've attached an Ultimax Scout Rail to replace the B-19N and an Axiom Cobra in order to still mount a flashlight. This alternate configuration moves some of the weight back to the center of the gun with the flashlight being on the 9 o'clock rail on that Axiom. It works alright, even if it makes me feel a little bit ridiculous with the flashlight in this position. Like with the AKSU, I was able to get a special deal on the parts for this rifle, so I'm going to use general market prices to calculate the overall cost. Currently, the market for the AK-74 rifles and parts kits is running extremely high, with complete rifles being found for $1,500 to $2,000, with parts kits costing over $1,000. Hopefully, this improves by the time some of you watch this video in a year, when the YouTube algorithm finally picks it up. I've been putting this rifle through hell, and your support has paid for the thousands of rounds shot in this endeavor. I'd like to thank you, and ask for a continuance of this support for my next projects, which will prove to be even more insane.